Right, let's move right along uh, to um, the new ecosphere of pay television and television content and the new platform and the new disruption that's going on uh, throughout that medium. And who better to start the conversation than the very busy man in charge of more than 200 channels at Fox, and not just the channels, but the production elements of that, the online versions, the mobile versions, a plethora of content that is indeed leading to tremendous results uh, throughout Latin America, in particular with an incredible mix of, of content. Uh, so to tell us all about that, the transformation of Fox, Fox International Channel's CEO is here with us. Hernán López, bienvenido. Thank you. It is such a pleasure to be here speaking to all of you. I want to thank um, uh, Charlie and Catherine for inviting me to speak again, especially giving me this great slot after lunch, the one that everybody wants to speak at. <laughs> and when I was preparing the subject of my presentation, I decided I wanted to speak about something that unites both us, the media companies, and the advertisers. Problems. We have some of the same problems, and I'm going to talk over the next 30 minutes about how to solve them, or at least how we solve them, or try to solve them, and there might be some lessons for all of us in that. The subject of the presentation is reaching consumer zero. And it comes from the realization that today's consumers have too much and too many. They have too many options, too many choices, too much information, too many messages. And on the other hand, they have too little and not enough. They have too little time, not enough patience, not enough shortcuts. And that is creating a new environment for us, the established media companies, and you, the advertisers. In this new environment, advertisers and media, for the first time I can think of, are suffering a lot of the same problems. Launching new products is more and more expensive than ever. But not launching is suicidal. One of the reasons, one of them is that getting noticed is very hard these days. But you know what's even harder? Getting noticed for the right reason. <laughs> and it's no wonder that most new products fail. They have for a while. Imagine how many things have to go right. But what would we rather have? Have a new product that fail or have your company fail because you failed to innovate? For a new product to succeed, so many stars have to align. First, we have to design a product that's right. Then you have to make it right. You have to execute it right. Then you have to get it noticed. And then you have to get people to try it. And this is increasingly difficult today. Why? Because in this world of infinite choice, strangely enough, People are only trying things that other people recommend. Think about it. Very logical, right? I am the millennial consumer. I have so many choices that I want to do what everybody else is doing. But that's how consumers react today. And it's our job as media companies and as advertisers, and we happen to be both, to adapt to the way consumers discover and try and recommend new products so to give them a better chance of succeed. I call this the paradox of millennial self-determination, the fact that people have so many choices that they want to copy everybody else. So how do we create urgency at the Fox International Channels and, and our um, other brands? How do we reach that consumer zero? You may say that some of the things that we do at our television brands may not be applicable to you as advertisers, but I think all of them are. There are differences, sure, between selling a shampoo, a car, a credit card, and a show about zombies. For one, you need shampoo every day. You may not need a car every day, almost every other day, but at least you need some form of transportation, unless, of course, you have the half-ton man from the TLC show, in which case 
you don't need to get out of the house. You may not technically need a credit card, but we've been trained and conditioned to think that we need them, that we feel we do. And do you really need to watch a show about zombies? Ask a fan. But of course, we're in a room full of marketers, and everybody here knows the difference between need and want, right? Everybody knows it? A need is a two-week-old want. <laughs> and sometimes we in marketing mistakenly, when we hear the word need, uh, associate with physiological needs, very deeply held needs, like food or survival, and we tend to forget that there's some equally important emotional needs, like the need for affiliation, and those are the needs that today are driving people to try new products. Um, think about it, um, how the need for affiliation is today being able to uh, be leveraged by the use of social media. But the flare that starts a consumer's the, the flair that, that sparks a consumer's imagination always starts on television. Still, this is true today. It's been true for many years, and I believe will be true for many years to come. All of us who are um, 100 years old and used to uh, go to advertising school, where's Gary? <laughs> we used to be taught that you needed packaging for, uh, you needed print and outdoor for packaging. You needed radio to get people to remember your brand name. And you needed television at the center of your advertising campaign because it's the one thing that helps you sell. It is the one medium that in the world of John Philip Jones uh, allows you to sell rational arguments inside emotional envelopes. That is as true today as it's ever been in respect of television. The only thing that's changing is that we are in search for discovery and social media where people advertise their own affiliations. I believe the companies that can use these three media effectively, search, social media, and television, did I emphasize enough, television, both in its linear form and on demand as much of the television is consuming, we still call it television, uh, are the ones that are going to be able to crack the code of how to get from consumer zero to consumer 100, to consumer 1 million, to consumer 100 million. And let me give you a couple of examples of how we do it at Fox International Channels, which operates as, um, we, we were saying, uh, over 320 actual television brands all around the world, including Fox, Fox Life, Fox Sports, National Geographic Channel, Mundo Fox, and FX. We try to make each of our, these brands very present and powerful in our consumers' lives. We want to be a conversation starter. We want each of our brands and the content that they break through uh, a conversation starter, things that people talk about. And now I'll give you an example of one stunt that we used in South Africa in order to launch Fox Crime, one of the most popular channels in Europe and, and now in Africa. We want, of course, the basis of our campaign is always television, gazillion rating points of television. But we also, every time that we can, we want to start and stage an event that will get people to talk about, we post it on YouTube, and we'll get people uh, to remember and, and, and talk about it to their friends. Watch this stand and tell me what the people you think will remember it. Messy one. 
Don't touch anything. Of course, there are only a few hundred people that attended that movie theater stunt, but everybody in South Africa that has a um, satellite subscription found out about that stunt, and many people all around the world found out about it because it was a brilliantly executed, very clever idea. That's how we want to uh, create destinations, turn our, what we used to call channels, into branded destinations. What's the difference? Uh, a channel was a linear branded destination, a branded destination can be also nonlinear. And it is when branded destinations combine with branded breakthrough content that we, that can be, as I said, either on the big screen, the small screen, or the middle screen, that we can turn each of our properties into must have conversation pieces that are urgent, that are not only must watch pieces of content, but are also urgent. And there's no better example of that than The Walking Dead. In three weeks, we're going to premiere The Walking Dead all around the walk. Fox International Channels own the rights to the show in 125 markets, and AMC obviously owns the rights here in the US. There's so much anticipation in the air that you have to be one of the undead not to feel it. For instance, there's the Dead Me Zombie a viral application has been downloaded already 25 million times. In Chile, there is a zombie parade that every year we've been doing. Last year got 10,000 people. 10,000 people dress up as zombies. 14,000 are expecting this year. And in Japan, on Monday, a zombie will throw the opening pitch at the baseball game of the Chiba Lotte Marines against the Nippon ham fighters. I had to memorize this. It's hard to forget the ham fighters, but that will happen and will be broadcast by Fox Sports Japan, of course. Perfect case of corporate synergy. So many people have turned The Walking Dead into something that is no also, not only unmissable, but also urgent, that we are premiering the show in Turkey and Australia 30 minutes after it premieres in the U.S. In Italy, is 17 hours. In Dubai, is 19 hours. That's urgency. At Fox, we believe in taking big creative swings from zombies to ninjas. A few um, years ago, somebody brought to us the idea called Cumbia Ninja. And this was such an odd idea that it wouldn't have passed the laugh test at a broadcast network. Imagine a show that combines Latin American music with Eastern martial arts. Add violence. Add two rival bands fighting for control of one hill. Add social commentary. And if all that weren't enough, add a dragon. <laughs> Strange enough, right? So the idea of Cumbia Ninja is set up in a hill, the La Colina, where the main character, uh, Ache, is asked to take control of the neighborhood after his uh, brother is stabbed from behind by a rival gang. But all Achi wants to do is to make music. Uh, and it's through his music that he will find a way to make peace in the neighborhood. The first song that he creates is called Eyes on Your Back, Ojos en la Espalda. And Ojos en la Espalda is also what you need when your giant agency 
gets absorbed by another giant agency in a merger of equals. So that will be very relevant to this room. We launched Ojos en la Espalda uh, as a YouTube uh, video, as a clip. Actually, we own all the rights to the music about two months ago. And people reacted to the name on social media, sometimes very negatively. And we listened. One of them said, I don't want Cumbia Ninja because, one, it's called Cumbia Ninja. The end. <laughs> we put so many times the campaign on it. I think we ran it with 800 grocery points. Of course, Ojos en la Espalda is a very catchy song, but when you hear enough, you have people to say things like, I don't have eyes on my back, but I do have ears, and I want to cheer them off every time I hear the song Ojos en la Espalda. Of course, that's what, how we knew that we had a hit in our hands. When we uploaded the video of Ojos en la Espalda to YouTube, in one week, we had 500,000 views. In a month, we had 6 million. Today, we had 13 million views of this particular video, and between all of them, we have 28 million views. That's a lot for a Spanish language a song, but, but somebody that's not even a major artist. We, we just created this, the, the song. And look at the ratings. These are the ratings that are unprecedented for a paid television channel. In persons 12 to 17 in Argentina, this is aggregating all of the Aries, but in its gross rating points, it's not reach. 21 points in Argentina in persons 12 to 17, uh, 12 in Mexico, 12.7 in Colombia, 12.7 in Chile, 10 in Peru. Look at even person 18 to 49. Should I should have mentioned the show is thought for young adults, but it's also carrying along a lot of adult viewers. 11 in Argentina, 5.6 in Mexico, 7.2 in Colombia, 5.7 in uh, Chile, 4.0 in Peru. These are numbers most broadcast networks today would die to have, but they wouldn't take a show like this one because it was too risky, and it's precisely this kind of risk what gets you to reach to the heart of Consumer Zero. I'm sure you're dying of curiosity to see at least one clip of Cumbia Ninja, so I'm going to oblige with it. An original production. Daring. Provocative. Where music leads us through a story. The place where tough reality blends with fantasy. Muchos creen que los dragones nunca existieron, pero ignora que en el amanecer de la historia. Los dragones habitaron el mundo en comunidad con los hombres. Chicura, mi hermano. Pero lo mataron por mi culpa. Where darkness and misery find light and hope. ¿Quieres llevarlos a la guerra? Es muy riesgoso. Tengo que saber qué pasó. Where even the most intense pain finds its expression in a song. A band. Aquí podemos ensayar. A neighborhood. And the struggle to stop barely surviving. And find the melody in life. Cumbia Ninja. And Fox, we're about to take a couple of other big swings, and this is the part where they allow me to do a sales pitch. We're about to launch Mundo Fox in Latin America and Fox Life in the U.S. Hispanic marketplace. We're doing it because we think there's a lot of appetite for shows like Cumbia Ninja and other shows that are originally created in Spanish that are not finding a place in broadcast television because broadcast tends to be risk averse, tend to only go for things that could have immediate massive appeal and doesn't have the patience to build shows that are risky like Cumbia Ninja or previous Cadabra or the even Walking Dead, which is today in the US the number one show in all of television, broadcast 
or cable. And equally with Fox Life in the US, at, in, at Channel in Spanish, we're taking over Utilissima and rebranding as, as Fox Life. We're taking the space that lifestyle channels like Bravo are taking in English language and applying it to Spanish. We're launching these products as well as many other products. Today, the Fox brand is in 200 million homes all around the world outside of the US. Um, and it is increasingly the brand that consumers love. If we can get people to love zombies and love ninjas, trust me, we can get them to love the Fox brand. We want it to be the brand they love, they watch, they talk about, and they're willing to switch platforms for. And we want to reach to the heart of Consumer Zero so that we can put Consumer Zero, our Consumer Zero, at your service, the service of the advertisers. Consumer Zero wants to be the conversation starter. Consumer Zero wants to watch The Walking Dead every week exactly when it happens. He wants to be the spoiler, not hear a spoiler. Consumer Zero knows by heart the words to Ojos en la Espalda. He even has a ringtone. Consumer Zero is the consumer that will make the difference between all of our products having a shot at being successful or being dead on arrival. Consumer Zero is the one that's ahead of the curve and it's our job as media companies and all of us as advertisers to make sure that the curve itself is a thrilling ride. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Right, I think we have time for questions. I'm sure there are plenty. Let me scan the audience quickly. Any hands raised? If not, I'll kick it off. Um, Hernan, let's talk about Consumer Zero, because Consumer Zero, obviously, is a multi-platform consumer. And there's this big uh, rivalry that is emerging in terms of semantics, even more defined in the last few days. Uh, Netflix talking about the fact that the future is to become internet networks. And he pointed out that broadcast did a good job of transitioning to cable. And for cable to thrive in the future, it has to become an internet network. And admitting that Netflix will become an internet network. I know you don't want to talk about Netflix, but to what extent to what extent is the launch of these new branded destinations aimed at these consumers zero, these millennials, very much based on blowing up perhaps the cable model and going for an internet network model? Uh, we call it branded destinations and they're probably the same thing that Mr. Hastings is referring as internet networks. We, we don't like the word internet or network. I, I think they're a little bit um, last, the last decade. Uh, branded destinations are places where consumers go that have a brand and they don't know how they receive it. They, they know they, they have a sense that they receive it through a pipe, but they don't know whether that pipe is the analog, uh, the coaxial cable or a fiber or it's a uh, wireless lead. And they know that they can access it on a device, whether it's their television set or the computer or the mobile or the tablet. Uh, we just want to be everywhere. And unlike Netflix, we do make our audience available to advertisers. Mundo Fox, what's different about it? Is it going to be a repackaging in Spanish or some specific, or is it going to be specifically produced content in Spanish for that market? There'll be a combination of shows that have been very successful in some markets, and we will launch it for the first time in other markets. We have partnerships uh, with uh, RCN, for instance, and a lot of the product that we produce is, comes from the, from the Fox. Uh, television companies uh, ourselves. And in terms of priorities in Latin America, where are you putting the money first? Uh, do you have any test markets that you want to explore first? Or is it the traditional you know, uh, uh, you know, two, 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 two lungs of Brazil and Mexico? Or are you going for some test Mundo markets? Mundo Fox will launch originally in Spanish only. We're not launching Mundo Fox yet in, in Brazil, so it will be uh, in all. And we're starting from the distribution of the current Fox Live uh, channel, so it will be available in, in nearly 60% of all Spanish language paid television homes from day one. Right. Hernan López, felicidades. Gracias. Fascinating as always. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.